Well, here we are, issue 33, with student ambassador Andrea Torres. Nice to meet you, Andrea. Nice to meet you too, Travis. All right, so could you tell us what did you do for your poster? Tell me a little bit about what you had going on. So during my undergrad, I worked a lot in microbial forensics, most specifically the genital microbiome. And so there's not a lot known about the genital microbiome. So we're trying to figure out, one, what bacteria is specific to the genital area for to be able to distinguish between male and female um, sexes, and then can we see those specific bacteria transfer um, between from person to person, and can we use that as forensic evidence to indicate sexual contact at the very least? Wow. That's, that's not something I ever really spent a lot of time thinking about, was the genital microbiome, which is interesting. What did you find out? So we're on the process of how to extract microbial samples. Um, genital microbial samples are very notorious for providing low yields and we need high input in order to get you know, valuable data. And so we spent uh, all the summer and the past year actually trying to optimize the extraction process for microbial samples. Um, we found that using a lysis method as well as using a slow um, bead beading mechanism helped improve yields as well as using not just one swab but multiple swabs to preserve to collect the most amount of sample as well as preserving them um, in sample collection buffer that's actually provided by Maui um, their iSwab microbiome kit and that increased yields by a lot and so we just we shipped samples to get shotgun sequenced but we're waiting on that data to come back in. Um, but for now, at least we know that the input of data we have is, is looking pretty good. And did you find, is there a difference between male and female microbiomes? Can you tell that yet or you yes, do you need so that data? We have, we have prelim published data actually. Okay. And if you look at this here, so each color is a bacteria with a bacterial strain with the, with the, like, the size of the bar being their relative abundance. And so there's, not a lot in the female uh, genital area. We can narrow it down to four lactobacillus species um, and Gardnerella vaginalis, but when we look at the male um, genital area, that's where a lot of questions come in, what bacteria are constant there and what's specific to the male genital area. Um, and so that's what we um, are trying to figure out with the data we're about to come and get in. Sure, that's great. Is this like a cleanliness issue? Not I mean, sure. look at these guys. That's crazy that there's... I think it has more to do with just um, the, uh, the microbial environment you live in. In a song, there's a lot of things that indicate what makes your bacterial community yours. So it, go, it all goes down to hygiene, um, environmental use, the kind of clothes you wear, um, even just what you eat, smoking, um, for women, it's the menstrual cycle. Like, there's a lot of things that go into just what bacteria is yours. Um, but there's some constant ones throughout sex. So we're trying to narrow that down first, and then we're, we want to be able to see if we can see those transfer. Right, so I guess you could even consider like what kind of cleaning products or other things like that that are utilized right. on a daily basis between the sexes? Right, so we take, when we collect samples, we ask participants, you know, what are your grooming habits? How, how much a day do you shower? What kind of soap do you use? If you use antibacterial soap, if you don't, um, we ask them their shaving habits. Like, if do you wax, shave, or do you just not shave at all? There's, um, do you take antibiotics uh, recently? Like what kind of things do you smoke? There's a lot of questions that go into that we can maybe, um, you know, narrow it down. We've had um, candidate bacteria that are not present in females. Uh, so except one of these four may not be on a female participant, but then we can go back to what we asked them and see, okay, they were taking antibiotics this week, or there's a presence of Gardnerella vaginalis, which indicates bacterial vaginosis. So there's a lot of things that you can come back to, um, but however, we do need a lot more samples in order to just indicate a general um, fingerprint or signature of what's on there. So did you consider um, people who had had intercourse and things like that? Because that would definitely change. Also ask about um, the last time they had intercourse. And so the study itself 
we ask 10 couples to abstain from sexual intercourse for at least 72 hours, um, then swab their, to get a signature of their stable microbiome, and then have intercourse, and then swab right after. And so what we're really interested to see if there's a, tr like, let's say female one and two had uh, intercourse, and, or couple one had intercourse, is there some bacteria that weren't on the female beforehand that are now on the males and vice versa. And so we're really looking to see the, at least the specifically the lactobacillus ones, because we know they're on the females and they're not supposed to be on the males. Um, and so that's what we were really interested in looking at. That's fantastic. I love this study. How in the world did you get people to sign up for this? Oh. <laughs> that had to take some talking. That's very, if there's one thing I've developed here, it's my my public speaking skills and, you know, persuasion skills. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot, there's we compensated participants who, who wish to participate and sometimes they would just do it on good faith. But a lot of word of mouth, a lot of, you know, not convincing, but just demonstrating the purpose of it. I think once participants got to see what the application of the project was, you know, they'll do anything for the good of science. Um, and so that's what we, we got a chance to bump into some really good couples who just really wanted to do good. And so that was also something that, you know, helped us in the long run. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Are you enjoying Ishi? Yes, I'm loving it. So much. That's so great. And good luck with the rest of this study. Thank Hope you. your, your, your um, data comes back and it all looks really great. Thank you. All right. Well, it's yes. very nice meeting you, Andrea. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Yes.